Okay, the guitar's basically got two main bits to it, I suppose you would say. Right. The body and the neck. Um, I'll start at the neck end. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we've got the neck here, where we do most of our playing. Um, this is a headstock. Headstock. Headstock at the top, which is actually on this guitar, part of the neck. So carved out of the same piece of wood. Can it sometimes be different then? Um, rarely. Right. <laughs> so it's all, it's all one piece, really. <laughs> um, you've got machine heads here, which are the tuning pegs. So you tune your guitar with these pegs here. So these will tighten or slacken the strings, sharpen them if it's tightening, or flatten them if you're slackening the strings. Mm -hmm. I shall just demonstrate here if I pluck this guitar string here. And if I turn the machine head away from me, that tightens that up. Yes. And that flattens it back down again. And they're attached, the strings are attached through those, is it? Yeah, the guitar strings go through these um, little posts. They're through there. And by turning the peg, it winds a little wheel. These move around, tightens up the guitar string or slackens it. Mm -hmm. All okay. right, so we've got our strings. How many so strings? So these are our strings, six guitar strings. Okay. Um, coming back down the neck, uh, we've got the frets. Mm -hmm. uh, as we move up the fingerboard or the neck, the notes go up. There's a semitone between each fret. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's up, that's back down. Right. Okay. Which brings me to uh, the frets um, and the guitar strings. Uh, six guitar strings, as you say. The low E is the one nearest me, not the one nearest the floor. Right. So a lot of people continue to say the bottom string, but that's actually the top string. <laughs> okay. So everything we describe in terms of up, down, low, high is all to do with pitch. So not positioning? Not positioning at all, purely pitch. So that's the top string because the it's got the highest string. pitch. Yeah. And that's the lowest string with the lowest pitch. All right, and that's, if we look at those strings, the lowest one is, is a lot thicker. It's a thicker guitar string, yes, definitely, quite a lot thicker. Mm -hmm. And they get thinner as you work towards the top string. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are they numbered? They are numbered indeed. Uh, the lowest string is number six, and then moving across five, four, three, two, one. Mm -hmm. Top string is string number one. And the note names are E, A, D, G, B, and the high E. There's two octaves between the bottom E and the top E. All right, I was going to say, what's the difference between two that? octaves? Two between octaves. Those. That's correct. So there's your six guitar strings, low E to high E, and the names in between. Which brings us down to the body of the guitar. On the body, probably the most obvious thing is the pickups. The pickups, what do they do? The pickups are effectively microphones which are just sitting underneath the guitar string, like literally holding a little microphone underneath your guitar strings, <laughs> picking up the sound of, from the uh, vibration of the guitar strings, sending it down the cable yes. into the amplifier, which I'll speak about shortly. All right. But it goes uh, down the cable into the amplifier, and as you can see on here, I've got more than one pickup. Some other guitars will have three pickups, some will have two. Some guitars actually do only have one pickup. Why do you have two pickups then? What's Usually the there is more than them? one pickup, and the reason is to create various tones from your guitar. Certain styles of music are quite happy with one tone, and they've built guitars with only one pickup. But generally, you'll have at least two pickups. Now, if I strum my guitar over by the neck, it's quite a warm, mellow sound. Mm -hmm. If I strum down here by the bridge, where the strings are fastened, it's quite trebly. Quite oh, there bright. Are, yeah, distinct difference between Quite those. a different quite a difference in, in tone there. Similarly, whatever pickup is working, if it's a pickup by the neck, you'll get quite a warm tone. Mm -hmm. If it's back by the bridge, it's a much more harsh type tone. That switch that you pushed and pulled then, what yes. does that do? This is a pickup selector switch. So that actually chooses how you want the pickups to be set. Simple as that. So as you move the switch back across, these pickups are actually divided into more than one pickup within themselves in effect. So as I've got the switch over by the neck, the neck pickup's working, right. and as you move back, you're moving back through the sequence of pickups back towards the bridge pickup, which is more trebly. So okay. that's what that does. Here I've got a volume control. Okay, these silver dials. That's uh, on zero, <laughs> and that's on ten. Okay, um, and these are tone controls. Tone. So again, Tone controls will affect the, the sound. If I turn that right down to zero, you'll still hear it, but it'll be quite muddy. If I turn that back up, 
it brightens the sound up, it just sharpens it up a bit. It's like almost on a camera when you're sort of pulling it into exactly, focus. Exactly, sort of brings it into focus a bit, yeah. Now you might want to move that around and get slightly different tones for, you know, blues as opposed to heavy metal or whatever you're playing. So you'd have different tones and different pickup settings for that matter as well. All right. That's pretty much what the guitar does. What's that thing? Other than <laughs> the uh, tremolo arm or whammy bar. Uh, what's happening here is this arm is attached into the bridge and as I depress the arm, the bridge gets raised. So as, that ra as the bridge is raised from the guitar, it actually slackens the guitar strings. Do that again. And the pitch drops. So that's lifting it up. Oh, it's lifting and it's... it up, slackens the guitar string off. Okay, and mm -hmm. we use, instead of finger vibrato, which would be this. If our people playing violinists do that type of thing also. To make the notes a little bit warmer and sustained, mm -hmm. you can do it with the uh, whammy bar. But now commonly, a lot of rock guitar players in particular use this as a real tool for dramatic kind of... kind yeah. of guitar playing, particularly in heavy rock, that, that type of stuff. So, okay. That's okay, what that does. So this is um, obviously an electric guitar. Yes. What's the difference between this and an acoustic guitar? Well, in terms of the guitar and the notation, nothing. One guitar is the same as the other. So you can learn to play pretty much anything on either guitar. You can certainly do anything on an electric guitar that you can do on an acoustic guitar. There are certain styles of playing on an acoustic guitar you couldn't do very easily that you could do on an electric guitar because electric guitar is physically more, uh, a little bit easier to play. The strings bend. <laughs> much more easily than on an acoustic guitar. But in terms of the notation, the neck, the body, they are the same instrument. Mm -hmm. The electric guitar is amplified, consequently it can be much louder, but it also means by using the amplifier that we can have a greater variety of sounds, whereas an acoustic guitar is, is fundamentally a one sound guitar. Okay, so people at home that are following the Giga Jam Essential Guitar Skills course part yes. one, if, they've got, if they haven't got an electric guitar, they can still play along with an acoustic. Yeah, I mean, with an acoustic guitar, certainly there's lessons, I think, up around about lessons seven, eight, and nine, where it really is the type of guitar playing you would do on an acoustic guitar, strumming, chords, that type of playing. The early part's more like electric guitar rock playing, but physically you could still do it on an acoustic guitar. Yes, you could. Excellent stuff. But obviously here in the studio, we've got electric guitars. That's right. And with those... Mm -hmm. We need an amplifier. We certainly do. Talk me through it. Okay, this amplifier here is a fairly standard guitar amplifier, I think similar to what most people will probably have. They may have amplifiers a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger, but it'll probably work in much, much the same way, I should think. It's a two-channel amplifier. What that means is you've effectively got two amplifiers in one amplifier, if you like. One channel you can set up as one type of sound, the other channel you can set up as a completely different type of sound. So there's two channels, but only one instrument going in. Correct. Um, Channel one here is my clean sound, which is what you would expect a guitar to sound like. Nice clean sound. Volume, bass, middle, treble. So you can obviously adjust those to your personal taste. Mm -hmm. Right at the far end here we've got reverb. If I take the reverb off completely and play my guitar, it sounds very quite dead, very much here in the room. Yeah. If I turn the reverb up to a ridiculous, ridiculously high level, just to demonstrate. Sounds like I'm in a dungeon or a very big room of some description. Very echoey. Quite echoey. Um, so if I turn that down a bit, but it's quite nice to have a bit of reverb on there. Most people will have that on their amplifiers, I, I would expect. Um, that's basically channel one. The clean sound, all you've got is a bass, middle and treble and the volume. The channel reverb, two. That channel two. Click in the little button, which swaps over to channel two. It sounds kind of hummy already. It already sounds like something more dramatic is going to happen, it doesn't does. it? It does. Um, my little light has turned to red, so you can see at a glance if you're playing what sound you're on, if you're in a moment of silence and you're about to play. Um, the main difference on this channel is the gain. Now, if I turn the gain right down, and then begin to roll it back up, you can hear that overdrive or distortion, as we call it, beginning to kick in. Mm -hmm. So you get this kind of... Very rocky, very darkness. Very darkness rock kind of sound, exactly. We've still got the treble, we've still got the bass, uh, we've still got the volume, but the main thing is that the higher you turn up the gain, the more of that distortion you will get. Well, in all the lessons we have uh, several exercises, uh, and this is not just for the guitar, for the keyboards, the drums and the, the bass guitar as well of course, where you can play along with the exercises 
Um, you can see video clips, in the case of the guitar course of me, demonstrating the, uh, the, the exercises. So a video will show you how to play the exercise. You can obviously also hear that exercise, and there will be notation showing what that music is. Okay. So well, you can play the exercise. Let's have a look at a video. Let me okay. scroll down to exercise one here. Here we go. Here's here. exercise one here. Now you'll see at the top, just above the music there, well obviously we'll get into how you read that music and how you play those chords in the actual lesson. But at the moment, just to understand how the course works in principle, there's three icons there, the first of which is a little video icon. Now, if you click any of those icons, it will automatically load in the exercise which is underneath the icons. Yeah. Okay, so if you click that video icon, uh, you will soon see a video of me playing that exercise. I see it and I hear there it. There it is. You can hear the music. Yeah. You can hear when I'm playing the guitar. Yeah. And that's exactly how the musical example's written. Mm -hmm. So you can see what's going on. So you get an idea of what it's meant to do, what it's supposed to look like. It can sharpen up your technique, make sure you're sitting with the correct posture, all that type of stuff you can get from the video clip, obviously. All the sort of things that you would say ask a teacher or a tutor, yes. but that you haven't got in your book. Exactly. And I think by watching people doing something uh, correctly, subliminally uh, that kind of goes in as well so the video is very useful in that regard not just hearing what the music sounds like what are the other icons that we've got okay there? the one on the extreme right is the midi file now that's the backing track to which you will be playing and if you just wanted to hear that in isolation you can click on that and listen to it but the most exciting part i think i would say is that middle icon there with the yellow g for giga jam on it if you just like to click that that will bring up something called the guitar extractor the extractor. Guitar extractor. The guitar which, extractor. Yes, indeed. Which is a piece of software which will play the backing track and allow you to play along with it. And as you can see, that looks somewhat similar to a, a car CD player, that, that type of thing. And a little graphic shows the CD going into the, into the extractor. Now, on the bottom uh, right-hand corner, just before you click the bottom right-hand corner, <laughs> actually, um, that little icon, if you just like to click that again, that takes that away. Click it, and what it does is it brings down a mixing desk. So when you hear the track in there, you've probably got drums, bass guitar, or bass, keyboards, uh, a metronome, piano, whatever. Everything. Everything that you'd find in most bands, you know, will be there and playing. Now you can uh, increase the volume or decrease the volume on any of those instruments if you so desire. You might want a little bit more bass, you might want a little bit more drums to keep you in time, whatever it may be. What would be the effect of that? The effect of that is just that from a musical point of view, you might like a loud drum beat to play to, you might find the piano is not the sound you want to hear prominently, whatever that may be, you can just mix it. They're, they're pretty well mixed as they are, to be perfectly honest, mm -hmm. but the individual can move them. And how you do that, if you can see on each of the channels, there's a nice little green button there, and it's just a little slider, and you slide that to the left, and that will turn the instrument down a little bit, or you slide it to the right, which will turn the volume up. Okay, that's simple enough. So okay. what else have we got on the Okay, extractor? now up above that, you can see uh, play, underneath the word Giga Jam. You've got play, you've then got pause, You've then got stop, much the same as any CD player. Mm -hmm. Next to that, you've got the loop button. The exercises that are written on the page will, or on your computer, will last for 16 bars only, unless you put the loop button on. It'll just run 16 bars and it'll stop. Put the loop button on, it'll just run and run and run and run as long as you want it to go for. So that's very useful, obviously, you can keep going rather than stopping and starting <laughs> all the time, which is a bit of a pain. So that's really, really good. Um, you'll also see that there's a tempo indication on the top right hand side. Now that, all the exercises in part one come up at 80 beats per minute. Now you can decrease that if that's a little bit too fast when you're trying to learn, or indeed you can go faster if you think you can play at 80 beats per minute to improve the speed of your chord changes, whatever. You can speed that right up and you know Im improve that way. So you've got something driving you along all the time. Yeah, there's always something you can do you better. Along. Exactly, yeah. you can keep getting quicker, or, or of course slow it down if it's a little bit too fast. All right. So that's really, really good in that regard. Um, over on the left-hand side, where the instruments are listed, again the metronome and the drums and the piano and what have you, you'll see an M next to each instrument. That means mute. So as a guitarist, for example, when I'm playing the exercise, I don't really want the guitar part in the extractor, because is, is it the extractor that I can hear, or is it my playing that I can hear? Yeah. So I tend to click the M and get rid of the overdrive guitar, and then it's clear that any guitar playing I can hear is me. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit play and have a listen to it. OK. Is this with the guitar in? That's with the guitar taken out. OK. Oh, no, there we go. So I could get rid of the guitar. There's a guitar, little drive guitars there. That's still there. Overdrive 
guitar. Overdrive guitar. There you go. So if you click out the overdrive guitar, that'll then work. And oh, there's the piano that's in. That's it. And if you highlight the other guitar part it might have been that was taken out, there you go. Now obviously I can then play along with that. So now we know that guitar sound is you and nobody else. What about if I speed it up a bit? Okay. Okay. Before so, it got too quick. Yes, thank you. So you can you can go through that. You can speed it up. You can slow it down. You can take out the instruments that you'd rather not hear. In my case, the guitar. Mm -hmm. You can increase the volume of the, maybe the drums or the bass or whatever you like to keep you in time or whatever your personal choice is. That's absolutely you know ideal, fantastic to play along to. Really, really good. Um, the other thing which you can do, which is very, very good, is it can record your performance and it will then analyse it for you. In other words, it will give you a percentage score mm -hmm. as to how well you played it, and it will actually print up a musical score, which is colour-coded, co uh, to show you how accurately you played the piece of music you tried to play. OK, so for in order to do that, we need uh, a MIDI guitar. We need a MIDI guitar. Now, you can't do that with a, a conventional guitar, not at least without a MIDI pickup. Now, this guitar over there uh, by your good self is a conventional guitar with a MIDI pickup attached, which is that thin black strip just before the bridge. Just that there? That's it there. That's a new pickup which has been attached to that guitar. You can attach it to any guitar. You buy it as a, as a unit. You attach it to the guitar and it comes with a set-top box which goes into your computer and that will convert it into MIDI so you can then record your guitar into the computer. All you right. then don't use the amplifier, you go straight into the computer. But obviously, I mean, if you've got an acoustic guitar, you can still play along with the tracks and learn the You can the still lessons. play away, of course. That's exactly what you can do. Um, Regarding the MIDI, the other thing, of course, you can do is use the MIDI guitar, which we spoke about uh, before one. the break, um, which is this guitar here. This will record straight in. You don't need any adaptions. You don't need a, a pickup or whatever. feels slightly different to a conventional guitar because we have buttons, I think, as we discussed earlier, rather than guitar strings. Yeah. But it works in exactly the same way. Plug it straight into your computer, and you're ready to go, and you can analyse immediately. Shall we have a go? Why not? All right, I'm pushing the red record button. OK, here we go. And this is just you doing it's exercise one. And don't worry if you don't know what's going on in exercise one, because obviously in lesson one, of course. we'll be talking about it in more depth. So I'm playing along to that there. Yeah, that's a good pace, actually, isn't it? Yeah, it's fine. OK, so if you stop that, hit the stop button there, and then you click the A for analyse. Now, as we didn't go the whole way through the exercise, I'll score a pretty low score, which is what I'm sticking to anyway. But it will bring up um, an analysis of how I just played that part. Ah, here we are. Okay, I'll put it full screen. Okay, let's see how I did. Right, your overall grading was 36.8%. You, you sound disappointed. Not disappointed. Okay, I should just point out that it will only mark the percentage of the exercise you play. So I played about 50%, this is the truth, about 50% of the exercise there, so even played perfectly, 50% is as good a mark as you can get. Right, Yeah. enough of your excuses. Okay. Let's look at what you should have played. This is on the top line. Yeah, the, t the top line, what that's telling you is that if you play the notes absolutely perfectly at the right time in the right place, they'll, they should come up as black notes, mm -hmm. and the grey sort of trail after the note is showing you the duration of the chord. Okay. Um, so that's then mirrored underneath. Right. So well, not mirrored strictly, Well, it's is not it? strictly mirrored, you're quite right. <laughs> but as you can see, there's a few green lines, which I think are uh, good. They are good, yes. There's a, yes. a colour coordination, uh, colour key thing under there, which tells you that green's good. Red's poor, unfortunately. Yes. Um, don't know what was going on here between don't know, don't know what, three and four. Don't know what was going on there. Um, but what you'll find is when you play on a MIDI guitar, it's programmed very, very accurately. So if you play something in real life which misses the note slight, I mean a correct note but not exactly in the yeah. middle of the fret, etc. It's programmed to get it absolutely perfectly right. So you can be a little bit forgiving with some of the scores that you would get, definitely. Alright, so practice is required for you. Practice is certainly required for me, yes. <laughs>